Hi everybody. We just watched Hi, Dr. Nick. <laughs> We just watched Elf and Lead episodes one, yeah. four, and thirteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um yeah. Yeah. quick little content warning for everybody yeah. listening. There are yeah. uh, talks of uh there's a lot of violence, talks of gore. death, gore, uh talks of m- mild talks of incest. Yeah. Um a little bit uh, of um I don't, I don't, I don't even want to call Paprika? it pedophilia, but like a little bit, maybe it's a little, it's a little weird in some places. Uh, uh and then underage content. Yeah. Uh, co- there's also, um, we, we might talk about, uh, animal abuse. So just to get yeah. all that out of the way, if any of that's not your jam, if, if you don't mm-hmm. want to listen to any of that, then feel see free See you to- next podcast. Yep. See you next time. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Okay, 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 Elf can I, lead. I wanna, Let's, yeah. I have something very important to mention. Uh, little baby deer, around the age of 12, I had a computer in deer's room, and deer would write, you know, little stories on their computer sometime, just because I had nothing better to do with my time, and I was like, all right. And I wrote this story about these girls who were basically experimented on, and they had floaty invisible arm tentacle things that would kill people and they were basically (laughs) uh, built by the government to do something i didn't get really far in it and anyway i showed it to max my my now husband at the time i showed it to him when i was older and he was like this is just elf and lead and i'm like what's elf and lead and he's like no you literally just wrote elf and lead how have you not seen it and so I watched Elf and Lead after that, and I was furious because someone took my story. <laughs> and I was <laughs> I was so angry. I hated this anime for a good amount of time because of that. <laughs> that little baby deer literally wrote Elf and Lead before Elf and Lead was a thing. So I have a love-hate relationship with this, and this is the first time you two are hearing this. So there wow. you go. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. So basically we can say <laughs> that Elfin Lead was written by how how old were you? you well, I was like 12? 12, 13 ish. So a twelve year old came up with the same plot <laughs> as Elfin Lead. I think that's saying something. Also, very, mm-hmm. very, very quickly, uh, before we jump into this, I just mm. I just happened to be on um my anime list and was like, what what else has this oh, studio God. done? Um, uh-huh. And the studio went on to do sequels of Icky Tozen. <laughs> so, wow. That's a fucking shocker, right? Also, a lot of hentai. Mm. So, um, anyway. Uh, yeah, you already said that. You said a sequel to Icky Tozen. Yeah, sequels to Icky Tozen. Yep, you're right. Um, uh, so, anyway, can, I guess can we'll we, just... Wait. Can we also talk about the review you found on my anime list? The The newest review? <laughs> Oh that's yeah, just, so I <laughs> that's just, I went to that's just me. Yeah. It's just I me. To, I went to my anime list and I looked at the newest review for Elf and Leaks. I was curious, and it was a ten, and I was like, "What the fuck?" So I read the review, and the the person was just like, "Uh, I really loved this a lot as a kid, and um, if I." It, I, I he's like I I want to defend it uh because I really loved it um and I know that I won't be able to defend it if I rewatch it now <laughs> because it's probably really bad so I just refuse to rewatch it so I can always say it's a ten and yep. I'm like oh that's sure <laughs> and then just real quick Gam what did your partner say about it if you remember oh yeah yeah he so so I, I was like oh yeah we're watching uh Elf and Lead today. And uh, he, he sort of just <sighs> went, oh my god, every emo t- anime teen experienced <laughs> animal uh, has be- like become like an AMV with, uh, with Elf and Lead. And then just went, listen, if you were a 12 year old watching six part anime episodes on YouTube, They're... it was the coolest fucking thing. Yeah. And in so... both of these I'm like, cases, okay, I now get it. In both of these cases, what Gam's partner said and what Spooky read off, they're both just me. <laughs> <laughs> They're just me. So uh, now that we've set everyone's expectations up really fucking high for the series, I, it's time to I'm, bring yeah, them crashing down. I am gonna say yeah. I, I feel like 
Because I know that we have a lot of people who listen who don't really watch anime, but I feel like uh, the people who listen who watch anime, you've probably seen Elfin Lead or at least like know a lot about it. Uh, it's a pretty good or guess. Or you've it's seen like, an AMV of Animal yeah, I Have it's, Become to it. It's like a <laughs> something. It's like a uh, almost a rite of passage for people, like young people getting into is. anime. Like yeah. <laughs> It's like it's everybody's like baby's yeah, first. It feels like a hazing edgy, ritual. Like, yeah. it, I feel like it goes <laughs> yeah. like it feels like it goes like Inuyasha, right? Like you get your first anime down. Some most of the time it was like Inuyasha because it was on Adult Swim, and then you start like watching like Elf and you're like, oh shit, this is so sick! Oh my yeah. god! It was like this and is good watch- writing and deep. <laughs> yeah, this is deep, and I am twelve. Yeah. <laughs> And then you just go from there, and it's like, all right, well, yeah, it's but, like I watch dark anime. I I yeah. like Elfin Lead. And it's like, like okay, you watch uh, this, and then you watch, watch when they cry. Those are the two you watch. But to be fair, Hikarashi, I actually like the story of. It's I just, mean, I uh, do too. When I was young, when I was young, I didn't. Um, I didn't. I didn't watch it for the story necessarily. You know, I was just like, "Fuck yeah, gore!" But uh, yeah, I. Uh, this is a series that I owned the box set of, and uh, when I rewatched it as an adult, I I, I sold that box Read the set box instantly. Set yep. <laughs> no, I sold it. I wasn't. <laughs> anyway, let's start off with the normal question. Uh, what do you guys think I scored this show? Uh, originally or now? Cool. Now, negatives are ironic, right? Well, oh. I don't. I don't really go off the negative scale myself because I pull up my MAL list thing. Uh huh. Um, yeah, and MAL doesn't have negatives. Does yeah, it? yeah. Okay. So I just base things. I I do consider like I, if it gives I, me a laugh, it does increase the score. I will say that. Yeah. So I'm gonna say a. S- Let's say a five then. Six. Oh, it's a, <laughs> it's a four. Damn it, I was right the <laughs> yeah, first time. Yeah, you were right time. the first time. The, the, trust me, if it wasn't for the laughs, it would be lower than a four. It'd probably be, it'd that, probably yeah, be a three. That's, that's what I was thinking. It'd probably be like a three or like a two, uh, so I gave it a four. Um, but we yeah. should probably get into it for the Yeah, reals. let's get into it. Do we have to? Yes. Sadly. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here, here, here we go. So we're hard opening to a dead dude on the ground, blood everywhere. Uh, some people are standing around a cage thing, and they're like, <laughs> "Nani!" Uh, and then we see uh, Magneto is uh, chained up in like a straitjacket. So I called the character Magneto Lecter. Um, uh, they're tied up, and uh, now there's like squishing noises and like characters' heads being, like, exploded and there's, like, blood everywhere and, like, people are being, like, torn apart. It's pretty fucking hardcore, dude. I do want to say that um, during this first bit, Gam and I were just talking about a different <laughs> show entirely. Oh, yeah, we were just talking about a different yeah, show and Dia's like, you guys gonna pay attention? I was like, yeah, 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 people are dying. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. None of this is really gonna matter. Like, it, it, like <sighs> it, it, it was the sort of thing where it's, like, three scenes in a row all that was happening was that this one character was walking forward and characters around I mean, them just kept approaching and then dying. You're not wrong, but also it was, like, very funny deaths, which is why I wanted you to watch oh. it. True, but it's the kind of thing of, like, I don't need to describe any of this in the uh, the thing. It's like, some of them were funny, but I've already forgotten what they were. Um, uh, but, uh, okay, so we cut uh, yeah, Magneto Lecter is out of the cage, and the butt fucking naked except for a helmet uh, uh but uh, forget that because now we're cutting to three random women talking in the the break room being like ha 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 i work hard at my job i make mistakes so often i'm a clumsy woman uh and then we cut back to uh men with guns getting guns uh g- getting guns loading guns cut back to the women uh and we cut back to an the orange woman uh, stumbling around with a tray with a single cup on it, because she can't carry a cup. Um, and then we cut back to Magneto Lecter blowing up heads again, and, like ripping torsos. But pretty fucking hardcore, dude. This, this is pretty fucking hardcore. Uh, 
Uh, and then suddenly there's like a bloody hand on the wall and then it rolls down and like pulls a lever that opens the door and it's like, okay, so it's some type of telekinesis of some kind that this character's got. Cool. That's a neat way of showing it. I actually really liked that. Um, I jokingly said, oh god, now there's a blood wall master there. Mm. Um, uh, but they open the door, they get on the floor, uh, cause, well, they don't, Everybody they just stand the there. Dinosaur. Cause there's more guys walking, uh, waiting there with guns, being like, uh, stop, or, we'll, or my mum will shoot. Um, and then they're standing there, and they're about to shoot her, and then suddenly the orange woman sh from earlier shows up, and stumbles right in front of the, uh, ha uh, Magneto Lecter. And then Magneto Lecter just fucking bursts her head open and then uses her body as a shield for the bullets. And my- I was like, oh, okay, I'm out. Like, this was the single moment where I was like, okay, I'm- I'm like, I'm giving this anime a shot. Like, it's ridiculous and not the fun kind of ridiculous. It's like, kind of frustrating, annoying ridiculous, but you know what? I want to give it a shot. And then this happened and I was like, so what was the fucking point of the woman? <laughs> and it's like- like, oh, yeah. I guess, like, to sympathize of, like, oh, she didn't deserve this. It's like, what, the men with guns did? Mm -hmm. It's like, and, like, this is someone we literally just met. Like, this, and the, the, the way I described it after, which was the, 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 helps me put across how weird this all felt, was that this feels like the beginning of the final arc in, like, a, a season of an anime. Like, oh my god, the villain is broken out, and, like, oh my god, shit has gotten real because we just killed, like, a completely innocent character that was, like, wasn't ever gonna harm anyone. Like, oh shit, the stakes have been raised. But this is just like, oh no, not that woman. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> we cut to uh, Magneto Lecter killing everyone except for, like, one dude. Well, not, a she doesn't kill everyone, but Magneto Lecter kills a whole heap of people, uh, but leaves, like, some alive. And just walks out of there, and uh, Lab Daddy is like, rah, 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 you won't get away with this, Magneto Lecter. Magneto Lecter is just, like, silent, because Magneto Lecter doesn't say anything. Uh, and they walk outside, and uh, Magne uh, Lab Daddy goes up to a dude with a sniper rifle, and he's like, you gotta shut her. And Magneto Lecter's walking out towards a cliff, and, and the sniper's like, oh, yeah. She can't, like, ev even she can't fucking get past my, uh, bullets in my gun. My gun's a big daddy gun. Uh, and Lab Daddy's like, okay, take the shot. And he takes a shot, and she gets shot in the head, and the <laughs> helmet comes off, and oh my god, it was a girl all along. And she falls in the water dead. Um, and then we cut to- oh, for fuck's sake. Can I make a comment to... really quick on the manga Go version for of her it. escaping? So apparently in the mm -hmm. manga version of her escaping, she's not silent the whole time. She's just talking fucking shit, and I think it's hilarious. Like, <laughs> like whenever a, oh that God. girl, like, falls in front of her, I guess in the manga, she, like, kind of holds her, like, hostage for a minute, and the dude's, like, like, the, the chief guy, uh, Lab Daddy, is, like, um, basically saying, like, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to make a sacrifice, there's, like, nothing we can do. And the girl's like, it's okay, I, I accept that. And then, like, Lucy kills her, but when Lucy kills her, she's basically like, huh, she fucking died for nothing, you piece of fucking shit. <laughs> like, she just, like, talks shit and laughs at them. And I'm oh like, that God. is Amazing. fucking hilarious. <laughs> I wish you'd have done Was that in the Was the manga anime. written by a 14-year-old <laughs> teenage boy? I don't, I don't fucking been. know. Like... <laughs> Anyway, that would have been so um, fucking funny if that had, if she was just talking shit the entire time, though. <laughs> it would have been, it, w it would have been, like, <laughs> literally, like, teenage boy fantasy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, this is, this is ridiculously bad and hilarious for it. Yeah. Um, so we cut to a character who I'm calling Baby Blue, because he wears a Baby Blue shirt. I called him like, Boy. Hey, that's his name. You, dear called him boy, I went for Baby Blue, because I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna call him Baby Blue. And then Speaker was like, well, he's in that shirt for the entire fucking anime. And I'm like, see? Baby Blue. <laughs> um, well, you know what? Boy he's also a boy in the entire anime. <laughs> he is also a boy. But he becomes a man in the end, except he doesn't. Um, so, uh, he exists, and uh, cut to, like, well, he's there. Another lady comes up to him, and I called her Maroon. 
mm-hmm. uh, because this is their personalities. Uh, and they're, like, talking or some shit, like, being cute or whatever, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, they're just talking and being like, okay, they're fond of each other in some sort of capacity, be it siblings or romantically invested or really good friends, whatever. Uh, this is weird tonal whiplash after what just happened, like, but okay, this can work. It's still good, it's still good. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we cut to the beach, where Magneto Lecter is just, like, on the beach, uh, naked, and... And we're like, oh, fuck, Magneto Electra's gonna kill him, but Magneto Electra acts like a baby, and just, like, flops down and starts, like, crying and tries to run away and then trips and starts crying like a baby. And they're like, aww, we're gonna kidnap you. So they take, <laughs> uh, they, <laughs> they take, um, Magneto Electra back to their house, which I, I think he says used to be, like, a Japanese restaurant or something? Yeah. Um, well, like, I believe like so. That. It was like a so traditional like restaurant, basically. Like an inn yeah, yeah. slash, like, bathhouse, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a proper traditional, yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, as they walk in, Baby Blue is like, Yo, dude, they got clocks in here? I fucking <laughs> love clocks! And then Magneto Electra is like, uh, uh, uh. And they're like, what? What the fuck? And she's like, new, new. And they're like, that must be her name. And then she's like walking with her legs crossed and like clearly agitated. And it's like, and the minute she started, I was like, please don't fucking just pee in the hallway. And so she pees in the hallway. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. That fucking sentence is so good. <laughs> anyway. I, 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 I just was like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, kill me now. Um. Uh, uh, Baby Blue wipes it up and Maroon comes out and is like yo, what the fuck was that? And he was like listen, it's fine, I'm into it. Um, and then cut to them like uh, feeding her jelly donuts and like she doesn't know how to eat her jelly donuts so they're like here you, you eat it like this like no, you're getting rice everywhere you gotta eat it like this sort of thing. Um, and then we cut back to the lab again and and the uh, uh, lab daddy is talking to a man that I'm going to call America Man. Mm. And uh, lab dude is like, dude, we got to kill her. Summon the SAT, uh, the sat nav system. And America Man shows up and he's like, hell yeah, I want, I'm in a training simulation right now. I'm meant to shoot the, the bad guys, not the hostages, but I'm so bad, I shoot the hostages too. Because I, like, stop giving me holograms, Guys, give me real people. I want to shoot real people. <laughs> yeah, he's literally like, like what's uh, the point if like people aren't screaming and blood isn't flying everywhere? And it's like, right? okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, he, yep. Yeah. Um, and then he comes up out of the area and is like, so w- what the fuck's going on? They're like, we have an assignment for you. He was like, I'm going to do it because I'm a bloodthirsty animal and I want to kill things. And a woman walks up and is like, hello, America. And then he punches her in the face and she goes <laughs> fucking flying. And I and she I pissed myself laughing purely because at the minute she started talking, I was like, what's the bet? He's going to turn around and just fucking deck her in the... And as I fucking had the thought, he does it. And I'm just like, this is... Written by a 12-year-old. Oh, this is... This is written by a fucking 14-year-old who thinks that guy is the coolest fucking dude ever. Like, he's just the coolest dude. Listen, when I wrote this um, story, I thought he was the coolest dude ever, and I was going through my edgy phase with my dad, okay? Oh, if you were going- um, I'm surprised it wasn't- I, I can't- ah! Nope, nope. Okay, um, <laughs> we cut back to the Scooby gang, and they've got, uh, pull out a shell- that uh, Baby Blue's sister gave to him or something when they were younger. Um, oh, I just realized who his sister... Fuck's sake, I hate this even more now. Uh, when they were younger, uh, Magneto Lecter snaps it. And she's like, ha ha, look, it's two now. Uh, Baby Blue goes fucking nuts. He's like, get the fuck out of my house, you fucking bitch. You snapped my fucking thing, my sister gave that. And she's like, Ugh! and just runs. Um, uh, we cut to the soldiers being like, uh, yo, we're ready to fight. And then America Man is like, yo, I'm just excited to finally get to kill a minor. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> uh, that's literally what he says. He's yeah. like, I'm, ex- I'm, I'm excited to finally kill a minor. Yeah. Like, I'm the coolest dude. 
Um, then we cut back to Magneto Lecter crying on the beach in the rain at night, and then it's the end of the episode, and mm -hmm. I fucking hell. Mm -hmm. do, do we want to talk about the manga at all anymore, or do we just want to go into the next episode? Uh, not, not for the first episode, no. Alright, so... Oh, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. Straight into the anime intro for episode four, which, by the way... The anime intro is basically based off of the painting The Kiss, if you don't know what that is. It's like a gold painting with two people kissing and a lot of patterns. It's really pretty. It's, I actually really like the painting. So I really like this intro a lot, but only for that reason. <laughs> the Latin and, and the <laughs> naked and the naked ladies are just like, all right, that's that's something. <sighs> OK, so. Pink haired girl is talking a short pink haired girl is talking to older pink haired girl who is like, don't run away. Go home. Don't take me with you. Short pink haired girl can't go back home to the science place where she escaped without long pink haired girl. Then older pink haired girl, long pink haired, whatever, is like, shut up. I'll kill you with my invisible hands. And then literally just bitch slaps her. So young pink girl is like, I'm going to fuck you up back with my arms and then they have a fight and choke out the older girl for a bit and she's like my arm vectors are longer than yours and papa's gonna punish you and then anime girl maroon <laughs> by the way is upset uh, on the side that boy is talking about older pink girl so much and he doesn't love her he only really likes pink haired girl so she punches him and runs away You're crying. Wrong. <laughs> that whore. Like actually punches him and runs away crying. Flashback to it's, child it's Maroon talking about some trauma she had and like his sister dying and how she was in the hospital and something happened. And then back to the fight. They're like, I'm going to fucking kill you. Older pink throws two stones at short. And then sh then we cut to another girl in a short turtleneck who's taking bread scraps for her dog because they're homeless at 13. Uh, and then she runs into Maroon Girl for a bit. And then back to the fighting. The older girl is stronger than younger pink haired girl. But pink haired girl has longer arms. So. Uh. Also, homeless girl is nearby and hears the fight. She's like, oh, what's that? I'm going to go over towards those explosions. That sounds smart. And then older gets close enough to younger girl to literally just throw her in a Yamsha hole. Because it's amazing. Um, younger decides to rip off older girl's legs, but then decides against it. So older cuts off younger's legs and fingers in front of homeless girl because she runs up. And she's like, don't fight. And then she gets homeless girl gets just yeeted into a tree. It's great. It's great. <laughs> it's, it really is. Older than rips off younger girl's remaining arms and legs. And she just thinks about her dad for a while, but older than nearly gets killed by a sniper and Papa walks up and takes the younger girl into his arms. And he's like, don't cry. You're fine. Younger does a oh, thing crap, yeah. to older where she stops her arm things from coming out and then they're surrounded. So he goes, picks her up <laughs> and goes, you're a fucking idiot. Then older goes, your daughter is dead, bitch. And Papa fucking bitch slaps her and she runs away. Then. Yep. Can I can I just can I just Go real ahead. quick like mention what I called when she mm -hmm. took her powers away? Because like when when because what she does is the 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 younger one like puts like an invisible hand up to uh Magneto Lecter's like face, and I, I for a second I thought she just like grabbed her nose. I was just like, ah oh, yes, I get it. So her powers are stored in her nose. <laughs> Like, yep. Got your nose, <laughs> and that's how that's how the father kept them under control when they were really young children. He'd play "Got your nose," and then he would actually believe it, and it would be like a placebo because they would think he's got my nose. I don't mm -hmm. have my powers. Yeah. <sighs> so we have Papa cradling young pink girl, and she has an internal crisis, going, "I'm useless." Ugh. Then we cut instantly back to Maroon Girl talking about the homeless girl with Bread Lady before flash forward. She's walking around watching a helicopter fly by inside that helicopter. We cut to that real fast. Young Pink is completely in bandages and they're flying back as fast as we can to get her to be OK. 
but Maroon finds older Pink without her hat crying and going, Mew, and I'm not the same. And then Boy gets a call from the hospital that he has to go pick up Homeless Girl, and then they go home, and Maroon and Ya Girl are here now. Homeless remembers what Mew did, but it's weird because these can't be the same person. That old pink-haired girl was, like, batshit crazy, and people's legs don't just fly off. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's literally a thing she said. She's like, legs can't fly off on their own. It's fine. So then they eat dinner, have a naked bath together. Then the generic protagonists talk about being a family and taking the homeless girl in. Then they have a moment. And because they have to, New shows up naked as fuck, covered in soap for no reason while they're having the moment staring at each other from across the table. Papa is now talking to the higher ups about needing to kill the young pink girl because she's now useless. Then someone calls and says, give me more money for a project. And he's like, sure. Okay. They're (laughs) apparently making a vaccine for something. And the science lady is like, I'm heading home. And scruff science guy who asked for the money is like, haha, tall pink hair girl is mine. <laughs> and then Papa goes over to literally give a lethal injection to short pink hair girl. And then they cry together and she die. And everyone's sad about it. And that's, that's, yeah. Yep. Da, 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 da. What? <sighs> so. <sighs> Fuck me. Yep. Yeah. God damn it. Last yep. episode. <laughs> the final episode. We're skipping four to fourteen episode quite a bit. 18. Or nine, thirteen. Nine episodes we're skipping. Or eight episodes, because we're on the ninth one. I don't fucking know. It's fine. <sighs> so I I so for reference, I the one that Deer called like the younger pink hair, I call her faux goth, because the first outfit I saw her in is like it, it looks like one of those like It's like new goth. Like, hot topic new goth, yeah. Um so I called her faux goth. Mm. Um So, uh Lab Daddy is holding on to Faux Goth in 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 the moonlight and is like, I am your papa and she's like, You are my papa blah blah blah. Um, we cut to, uh, uh, Magneto Lecter standing on top of America Man, and is like, you'll never see me again, and, and he's like, wait, no, but, and then, uh, murderates him. Um, uh, or, well, technically she doesn't, because he just is like, I'll get you for this, and she just walks away, so he could be alive and come back in the sequel. Um, if he does, that's fucking hilarious. Um, we cut to, uh, Dog Girl. I forgot what Deer called her already. Uh, my mind Homeless is Girl. Like a sieve right now with this. Is homeless she, Girl, that's right. I called girl. her Dog Girl because she had a dog. Um, <laughs> uh, she, uh, and Maroon are talking about, like, Baby Blue's past. And Maroon is like, so, Maroon is doing the one thing she always does, which is talk about Baby Blue, because she doesn't fucking pass the Bechdel test at all. Um, <laughs> Uh, she's like he uh trauma and sister and thing and dog girl is like wow that's so interesting thanks for kidnapping me by the way um then we cut to lab daddy at a hospital and there's like just a another girl in a in a bed who I call peach because her hair is peach colored uh hold on uh <laughs> we cut cut to uh Magneto Lecter looking out in the distance. Uh, and then we cut to a lab dude uh, walking down the uh, hallway looking at his phone and then suddenly a guard gets like his head blown off and like twisted and his torso twists off and like thrown against the wall. It's pretty fucking hardcore dude. Uh, and the lab dude's like what? And then Peach rolls out on her uh, wheelchair and is like, ha, huh, I'm feeling better now. Uh, can I have some apple juice? <laughs> and the lab technician's like, whoa! And uh, Peach is like, Magneto Lecter is on the way. Um, and, and it's like, oh, fuck, son. Uh, Pete, uh, Magneto Lecter walks up some sort of uh, boardwalk thing. I don't know where they are. It's like a the base of a Ferris wheel or something. I don't know. Uh, it's just a location, I guess. Yeah, it's just kind um, of a location. Like a lookout. Yeah, it's like a lookout area or something. Um, uh, and, and Peach is there waiting. And then they fight with invisible hands. And then Magneto is winning. 
And then Peach does that villain thing of, ha 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 ha, you thought you'd beaten me! And then punches Magneto Lecter with a million punches and kills them. Uh, breaks the horn. One of the horns, one of the cat girl ear horns on Magneto Lecter. And Magneto Lecter is past the fuck out. Uh, and lab technician man runs up and is like, oh my god, you did it, let's capture her, we can do it right now. Uh, and then lab daddy shows up and Peach is like, what? Who are you? And then he's like, I'm your daddy. And she's like, daddy? What? Huh? Uh, and he's like really sad and she's like really sad and then he pulls out a gun and then he just waits forever <laughs> and it, peach is like wow i've been waiting to get better to make mom and dad see me get better like oh my god and now you're doing this how could you do this daddy why and then daddy cry and then daddy say he can't kill child and then uh faux goth is like come on daddy you can do it you know we have to get away from here now and then Peach is like, I'm sorry, what did you just call him, bitch? Um, and strangles Fogoth. And then is like, hey, daddy, would you be sad if I killed Fogoth right now? And then daddy's like, I gotta shoot you. But he runs up and hugs her. And is just like, I'm sorry, I couldn't do it. I could kill all the others, but I saved you until last because you were my own child and I can't do it. And everyone's like, aww. And then he walks away and then he walks into a bomb and blows up and she's dead now. Woohoo! Gotcha! Fucking gotcha, you little sneaky, sneaky boy. <laughs> he killed himself, but also killed his daughter. Yes. Uh, ooh, sneaky boy. Ooh. Um, uh, lab technician dude is like, whoa. Well, anyway, you're the last one now, Fogoth. I'm going to capture you. And then Magneto Lecter is awake again and kills him. Um, surprise. Uh, we cut back to a big bad dude who I assume is the big bad dude and this is the only time we ever see him out of the three episodes we've watched um and he's like uh rah 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 you should kill um uh we sh we've got to do big plans and the lab lady is just like hey can I go have a bath and he just like looks at her pulls off his wigs to sh reveal that he's bald and he's like oh <laughs> why would you do that like there's no reason I to like do that, that. You say to reveal that he's bald not to reveal the horns mhm mm well yeah the horns uh, well you can see the horns under the wig can't you no not on his no not really <laughs> oh that's why i, has the I wig. just assumed you could <laughs> Yeah, oh, okay, well, he has horns too. Gimp really thought that the reveal there to her was that he was just bald. I don't understand why he does. I, she asks if she can have a bath, and he pulls off his wig and says something completely unrelated. Mm -hmm. I, oh, it makes sense. He was talking about his horns. Okay. Yes. What does that have to, got to do with a bath, Spooky? Yes. What does that got to do with having a bath? It still doesn't make sense, but it's way fucking funnier that you think he pulled off his fucking wig. <laughs> and she was like, oh my god, holy shit. She's just like, oh my god, you're from. You were in. White said, Fred, I don't need a bath anymore. Oh I'm God. already wet. <laughs> uh. Anyway, <laughs> uh, anyway uh, that's the last we see of them. Uh, we cut to Magneto Lecter finding Baby Blue walking out in the midnight, and they hug, and he's like, I love you, Adrian. And, and she's like, I was made to kill humans. And he's like, I love you. We had a life together. And then there's a montage of all their moments together as children. We'll get to it, dear. Um, mm. uh, all their moments together, like tears in a rain. Uh, time to die. Um, and uh, the dude's just like, wait a minute. You had a really sad life too, didn't you? Um, and she's like, sure. Um, we cut to Fogoth walking home. But she's... um. Uh, shivering and shitting and farting, walking around. She's basically drunk. Um, yeah. She's absolutely shit faced, trying to get home from the club. Uh, and she's like, I gotta, I gotta, f I gotta get, get out of here. Uh, we cut to Magneto Lecter facing the soldiers, and then the camera pans up, and all the soldiers shoot above her because they're bad shots. And then suddenly a horn goes flying in the air, and it's like, oh, it was just bad framing. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Magneto is dead. Uh, cool. Uh, credits, and then post credit scene, oh my god! Um, Baby Blue has another shell, and then Maroon checks on him, and is like, are you fucking thinking of that whore again? Uh, Fogoth <laughs> and Dog Girl are cooking food together, 
and they're like, oh, here, set the table. And then they're like, why have you got an extra bowl out? And, the, and Maureen's just like, in case she wants to eat. And it's like, okay. And then they're just like, oh, well, well eat a ducky mask. It's like, wow, this food is oishi des, nah. Um, uh, and then uh, they're like, oh my god, there's a knock at the door. And they look at the gate and the clock strikes 12. Oh my god. And Baby Blue's like, what? What's this shadow at the door? Ooh, ooh, and then it cuts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the he looks at the shadow, the clock strikes 12, and then he looks back and the shadow's gone. Spooky. Um, uh, let me talk about manga stuff really quick. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay, I even get to start by saying I knew... Uh, I, I've looked up the manga stuff in the past. I remembered one detail from it. I uh, went back and looked up stuff directly before recording this, and I probably have already forgotten really major points. But anyway, basically, uh, the manga continues the story. There's a whole thing that we missed. So, like, Mr. Bald Man with Horns is, like, obviously also a Diclonius. And he's like, my real goal is is, uh, fuck. My real goal is I want Lucy so that we can make a fucking missile and launch it at the Earth that'll spread a virus that makes everyone into Diclonius because fuck human humans. Mm -hmm. we're, all, we're all gonna have cool invisible arms that come out of our back instead. Hell it's, yeah. Um, so, isn't that an X-Men plot? I yeah, technically. No, yeah, it is. Where okay. they basically are like, let's make everybody mutants so that oh, okay. we're not the weird yeah. ones. Yeah, isn't that isn't that Magneto's like literal plot in one of the movies? Oh, to be like, fuck. Oh, I'm gonna make everyone a, ma a mutant so they the humans know how it feels. No idea. Yeah, I don't fucking know. Uh but anyway, so that's a plot. Uh Lucy in the manga survives the shootout scene uh apparently shooting off her other horn makes her permanently turn into new instead of lucy like i don't i don't really know why that happens but apparently that's what happens if you shoot off both of their horns like if they lose their horns they they turn into a cat girl yeah they they mm -hmm. become the the an alter ego that isn't uh made to destroy humanity for some reason but the horns grow back and uh, at some point in the manga, Lucy like goes on a rampage and uses his, you, you, I can speak, uses her powers to the max for too long, which, <laughs> this is the part that I, I've remembered, it stuck with me. Um, it causes her to start to melt, so there's just a scene of Lucy on the ground and she's just like a pile of goop and her head is sticking out and she's handing Kota a gun and is like kill me and Kota uh, is like I you know Lucy I love you but uh, you killed my fucking dad and sister I love you but I'll kill you and he like shoots her and she dies Good. Um, and then he he's like, "Well, now that my love interest is dead, I guess I'll just <laughs> marry my cousin." And then they have a baby who they name New, and uh, he he goes to this spot every every year where Lucy says she'll meet him on this day, even though he knows she's dead. And one mm -hmm. day he's there, and um. These two twins walk up to him and they're like, Mister, what are you doing? And he's like, uh, waiting for someone. And they're like, oh, okay, our names are Lucy and you. And he hugs them and is like, finally, I found you again. And it's like, what the <laughs> fuck is happening? Because they're supposed to what? be Lucy and you's reincarnations or some bullshit. Oh my god. So, it's like, what? It's like, you're coming home with me. Yeah, they, he just so kidnaps them. So we've got to go them. home. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the manga. The uh, fucking goddamn dude. This this series. Um, yeah. I would fill you in on like all the stuff that happened like throughout the anime, but I'm going to be honest. Like We covered most of it. The only thing we didn't really cover that 
I feel like as important, like, in any regard is, uh, the backstory episodes, um, which is basically, uh, Lucy is sad and alone and, uh, kills, I don't fucking know, dude. She, like, goes to a school, she finds a dog, goes to a school, she's all lonely, uh, but she has her dog, and then these kids are like, well, joke's on you. We're bullies, so we're gonna beat your dog to death in front of you. So then she murders all of them, and then she's like, well, fuck, I guess I better go murder more people. And she murders people and, like, steals their house, and she's like, yep, mm-hmm. I live here now. And then, uh, she meets Kota, and Kota's like, hey, you seem cool, let's be friends. So then they're friends, and then she gets jealous, because he has to go, uh, hang out with his dad's sister and, and cousin instead of her um and when they're on like a a fucking train going back home he's like with his dad and his sister and she's like gets on the train and kills everybody on the train except for kota and um these are real things that happened these are real things that happen and i really like that despite all of this kota's like i still love you and it's like but why like, I, you know, I don't care what feelings I had for someone or, like, if we had fun times hanging out as kids. If you, like, murder my fucking beloved sister and Family. father in front of in front of my eyes and, like, brutally, like, fucking cut them in half, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have any positive feelings towards you anymore. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, there's not gonna be, like, well, you know, you did bad things and I'll never forgive you, but I love you regardless. Let's kiss. And it's... <laughs> Uh, but yeah it's yeah fun shit Uh, America guy Lucy does like fucking fucking like rip out his eyeballs which is kind of cool I guess Um, that's pretty fucking hardcore dude yeah (laughs) also I just there's a fucking like storyline where the homeless girl becomes like friends with America dude for some reason. <laughs> That's yep. like a thing. Yep. And in the manga, that... I guess it's like implied that they like uh, it, it, Darn. it's not I don't know if it's necessarily romantic, but it's implied that they're like like he oh, doesn't God. die and they're like reunited and and she's like I knew you <sighs> wouldn't die. And also I guess in the manga, uh Nana Tells her the the d- science daddy who she's been calling Papa <laughs> through this whole thing that she wants to marry him and have his babies and then it's implied he's like fuck no. Um, also, <laughs> I almost forget. Also in the manga, there's like a thing that happens where people aren't allowed. Nobody, nobody in the world. I don't know if it's the world or just Japan or what. I'm assuming the world. Nobody's allowed to have babies for four years because they could be a Diclonius. And it's like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> so yeah. I... <laughs> it's so fucking... I'm... It's so fucking funny. I don't know. It's bad. Uh, I... Uh... Oh yeah, I forgot. Whatever she, like, murders his fucking... <laughs> dad and sister he yells he's like weren't we friends (laughs) Mm -hmm. and she's like we are and he's like then why did you kill my dad and my sister and it's like what the fuck (laughs) anyway uh (laughs) any any words you guys want to say yeah I already, I mean, I already no, brought up the fact I, of why I have feelings for this fucking anime in both love and hate. Right. So. Yeah. I, I think all of that just kind of, knowing that I was that emo child, like Gam's partner mentioned, that watch six part episodes on YouTube. And I was also that child that was like, fuck this show, they stole my shit. <laughs> so, you know. Gam. Gam. I... I oh, I this anime feels like it was written by a edgy 14-year-old. You're right. Boy. I wrote it. And I I 
again, I, Gam, it's I the wrote kind of it. Thing I know. For me where Please don't like, call me out like this. I I don't even have like the energy or like the care for this to even be like I hate it or like it's awful I'm just like I of course it exists of course yeah. this is like this of course mm -hmm. like this is like this and it's just whatever just of course just I, I, I get like I said the second that the orange business lady got like killed I was like oh okay I get it I'm out yeah it's just so <laughs> I'm just like it's just so it's, like it's... my my like it, it's so like this is so bad that I'm just gonna laugh at the stupid shit that's happening throughout it instead of actually yeah. giving any thought to the story. By the way, what the dude yeah, wrote and... this when he was in his thirties. <laughs> mm. I just looked it up. Like I said, a fourteen year old teenage boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's amazing. I I will say that like it's not there's not enough stupidity or, like, not enough over-the-topness for it to be, like, enjoyable to recommend of, like, oh, it's, like, a, a, a real fun, like, just ridiculous ride to, like, watch the ridiculousness of it. Like, if you have a connection to it in any sort of way, like, watched it in your childhood or, like, watched it when you were, like, a kid or a teen on YouTube. I accidentally like, wrote it as a teenager. You, you would be... Yes, you would be able to have an easier time i feel sort of like enjoying the ride of like this is ridiculous of like yeah, oh i used to sense. like really think this was cool mm -hmm. or that sort of thing but as someone who has never seen this before this is my first experience it's like it is not so bad it's good it's just like embarrassing <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. To me, it's like, yeah, the embarrassing is what's so funny to me. Like, the fact that they're, like, taking this story so seriously, like, that's yeah. what's so funny to me. It's like they're, there's they're very big much so and yeah. Like, like the dog thing, right? Like, they don't at all need to kill the fucking dog, but they're like, no, well, let's just brutally I... murder the dog. Fuck it. Let's be dark See, and I edgy as that's... fucking possible. Yeah, see, that that sort of dark edginess of, like, oh, these, like, grade school kids are just fucking, like, beating a dog to death. It's like, I see that, and I don't think that is hilarious because of how embarrassing it is. I see it, and I just go, this is embarrassing. Oh, yeah, like, see, I think that shit's fucking hilarious. And embarrassing. Anytime there's, like, especially, especially, like I said, with any, like, out super outrageous bullying scenes, I fucking okay. lose my shit. It's always, like, so. really fucking funny to me. Huh? This is the end of the podcast, Spooky. You, you know, promote animal abuse and murder. You find it hilarious, yeah, yeah, right. I see. Yeah. This Spooky is the end of the podcast. Yes. Uh, excuse okay. me, I was I just say... promoting bullying, okay? I <laughs> that didn't too. specify the dog murder. It was, <laughs> it was specifically... Excuse me, I was yeah. promoting mm -hmm. bullying. Come on now. No, the over the... T I don't know. Anytime that shit happens, because it's always like used as an excuse as to why a shitty character is shitty and it's oh, always yeah. supposed to like they, they expect you to see this shit and then be like okay I, I i understand now and this character doesn't seem bad anymore it's, but instead mm -hmm, it's, it's, it's just so fucking funny to me because it's so over the fucking top stupid bullshit that it like kills yeah, me. It, it's like they they understand that like a one-dimensional villain only goes so far yeah. and isn't that like like isn't that great a a a an anti-hero who's like doing shitty things but is like your protagonist only goes so far as well and your audience is only going to be on their side for a little bit so you need to give them something and it's like okay well stories tend to give like tragic backstory so like they know to give a character like this a tragic backstory to to like show why they're such a dick but they don't understand what makes the backstory tragic right, right. other than like this event happens and it's like wait why did this happen and yep. it's like oh just because like these people are real shitty it's like these are grade schoolers that you're getting to beat a dog to death it's yeah like, mm -hmm. <laughs> i think you have a few narrative problems here buddy yeah it's like a uh, when we watched jobless reincarnation like that was his whole thing like they were like oh, yeah excuse yes. rudy yes. being like a pervert and a piece of shit uh because 
When yeah. he was in yeah. school, yeah. they tied him to backstory. a fence naked and laughed at his small penis. And I'm just like, yep. well, yes. excuse me, what? So happened? it's completely fine. <laughs> yeah. But mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's like, oh, we gave him a, 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 a an embarrassed, like a sad backstory. That means we can get away with anything. It's yeah. like, and it's like no, no, that's, that's not how like, it works. <laughs> You don't understand how a backstory informs your character. It's like, they know to have a backstory, but they don't understand what the point of it actually is. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, it, I don't know. So yeah, what, like, that shit fucking kills me. Like, knowing, like, yeah, you know, you should be, like, kind of okay with, with Lucy murdering Kota's father and sister and also, like, just a bunch of innocent people because, um, she was really bullied and it's like... <laughs> But it was, like, so over the top. Like, if it was, like, normal, just, like, standard bullying, I wouldn't be like, oh, ha, 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 this is hilarious. It's the it's yeah. always, like, ridiculously <sighs> fucking over the top. Oh, yeah, you know? of course. Exactly. So that's what makes me laugh, is it's just, like, the extra edginess of it. The edginess of shit just, like, gets me. I don't know. I love laughing at this shit. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Uh, so, so how would you guys score it? <laughs> I'm going to pretend that I didn't just watch it and I'm going to say that I only watched it once in my life and gave it a 10 out of 10, but then also <laughs> I'm going to give it a 0. So it's going to have both the scores of 10 and 0 from me. <laughs> oh, fuck. I, you had me for a second there, dear. I was like, I really hope you just read out the entire review of that 10. Oh my like god, that, I should have said it in advance. <laughs> Fuck, that would have been amazing. Uh, I, I, I love what you did, though. Yeah. Um, oh, so okay, no, I, hold on. Hold on. Just do you want to cut it in? Because we can. No, no, no I'm not going to cut it in. Right, I'm not fucking cutting it in. I'm just saying because I like I, Elvin Lee, and the writing here is exceptional. I still enjoy it to this day. When the way <laughs> it manages to comment on so many controversial and dark topics is honestly incredible to me, and I will never what? not defend this anime unless I rewatch it, which I have not done. <laughs> Let it be known that this was the first anime that I really ever enjoyed. However, the show is really flawed. I do love it. I have never gone back to it, especially not since. Did not watch it. Probably will never go back to it. The show is perfect in my eyes, even though it's not. It's edgy and silly, and yet I think the character reactions are amazing. Lucy is a fantastic character, and I still think her childhood arc is fantastic. So here's where I stand, okay? No, game, here's where I stand. I love this show, but I cannot defend it. It is flawed, and I accept that. The dog scene was good development, but a bit much. And the way it handles discrimination with Cyclonius, and how it connects to the real world issues. Like black <laughs> just are so good to Dorn. me. I I stop myself. But yeah, just to me, it's like I I, uh, I oh. like it and I think everyone should watch it, especially if you want a good edgy story. But it's not oh. for everyone. Final score, mm, ten out of ten, honestly. I I hang on, I need to go back real quick. So. The way it talks <laughs> and ab- and has social commentary. <laughs> Yeah. What does it have to fucking say? I Bullying don't know. Bad. I don't know. Discrimination don't know. is bad. I don't know. Abuse is bad. Fuck. Man, we got some fucking controversial hot takes up in this shit. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. I Oh my fucking god. I I oh <sighs> <laughs> Zero. It's. I was gonna say negative one because like there are some bits in this where it's like you could like absolutely tear this apart and be like this is just awful mm-hmm. and like have some fun doing that. But especially after that review and and knowing the fact that there are probably some people out here who like say that it's actually really good in this sort of no it, it, no you, zero fuck this like I I I no oh god ah. Uh, Mm-hmm. Good shit. Fucking hell, man. This is like edgy 14 year old teen boy fucking like or story person. of like, I've just learned. A- oh, man. I just learned about racism. That shit's <laughs> fucked up, guys. <laughs> guys, have you heard about racism? That shit. That, that shit's like. I can't believe this exists. <laughs> so, okay. So there's there's a thing that me and Max have talked about before, and it was, why are there no, like, 30-year-old emo kids or emo people, right? Because, cause, like, goths tend to grow up, and they tend to keep their fashion style. There's no adult emo kids. Maybe the writer was the only adult emo kid. Oh, my God. I, 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 I remember how that joke used to go. 
as a kid, because that was an actual joke. It was like, why don't you see emo adults? And it's like, because they kill themselves before they get wow. there. Wow! <laughs> that was always the joke. Um, uh, and, you know, wow. obviously don't kill yourself. I, yeah. I never really thought that joke was funny, even when I was an edgy fucking kid. Right. <laughs> um, but this is like, yeah, no, this feels like, I, it, it, it's, it's not even like he sat in his, he, he sat in his, his bedroom, locked himself in there for a month and just listened to My Chemical Romance CDs for, for the entire time until he came out with this magnum opus. It's like, uh-huh. it's not even like that. It's like, it's like someone was humming the lyrics to like the Black Parade. Yeah. And then he was like, I have a really good idea for a story. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it's so surface level, even on, like, an emo level, which already is, like, pretty, like, can be really pretty surface level of, like, man, the world's shit, like, fuck the world, like, this is, this is awful, I'm nihilistic, like, I, I, I don't want to be part of this, like, fuck this, like, mm-hmm. already, there's a part of, like, emo subculture that can be very surface level, but, like, this is a surface level, like, entry into that already, so it's, like, it literally just is, like, Racism's bad. Yeah. Bullying's yeah. bad. Did you it, guys it know is. that this exists? It's pretty bad. Yeah. But you know what's pretty badass? Bodies Boobies. exploding. Yeah. Boobies. Titties. <laughs> underage titties. God. It's I just uh, having your fucking, having fucking your, your cousin. I was gonna say having your cousin from a long time ago that you've apparently been in love with forever want to fuck you. Yeah. <sighs> I, mm, yeah, no, I, I just, mm, I can't, I, 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 if you, I don't know how to feel. I don't know. I, I just, don't why feel, did you make me watch this spooky? Don't feel because anything. Because we it's had fine. to. This is a, an anime classic game. It is. It yeah. actually is. Yeah. Like, that's not even a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good one, but it's a fucking classic because everyone watched it and thought it was real fucking cool when they were young, so. Like like I said, like you said, I, I forget if it, I think it was Dia who said it was like a rite of passage jokingly, yeah. and then Speaker was like, yeah, it is. And then I said, yeah, it's a fucking hazing ritual. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I watched this like at the same time. It's not a rite of passage. At the same time period that I watched, uh, I watched it at the same time I watched Icky Toes, and I was into both mm-hmm. these series simultaneously. Yep. That's and I understand why you're bisexual. Yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna head out and go um listen to MCR while Hell I cry yeah. in my bed. I'm gonna yeah. go. Some... Okay, I'm gonna go fuck my cousin. Yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> kill a dog. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go hum the Evangelion intro and find a dog to beat to death. So. I'll... <laughs> No, actually, I'm going to grab a small child and then explode on a bridge. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I'm going to go kidnap a child, actually. (laughs) See you guys next time. Let's go kidnap multiple children to build a small family slash harem. All right, bye. Yep, Yep, next time we'll we'll see you when we watch uh, Teletubbies. Teletubbies. Oh, my God. Tiki. Fuck yeah. (laughs) Dipsy. Dipsy. La, la. La, la. Po. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, goodbye, everybody.